definitely heaven. As my sexy assistant is showing you, that jig needs a pillow under its ass for better driving activities. And I'll know how big my knock can be. So let's get balls deep. You probably have noticed hand planes come with a flat headed screw. Some really hate this. Me, I think that the box, especially with dressing a hinge. Nonetheless, a flat headed screwdriver is usually like playing sneaker with a bit of rope. I'm not sure if you can buy this, so forget I'm making one. And without a lathe. <laughs> For those that ask, does it clamp a mortise chisel? No, it doesn't. Well, it doesn't clamp mortise chisels from the EU anyway. No honing guide does. I'll get to that in another video soon. Don't get me wrong, I normally treat my tools well, but this is one tool I couldn't give one solitary f about. Festool taxes without the Festool quality. And yeah, I know there's a hack to get the bloody thing running like the Festool tools, but no f that. I shouldn't have to. I have a bandsaw, so this shite is seldom needed anyway. Anyway, the point is, I couldn't care less about it, so drilling any holes into it matters nothing to me. All tool manufacturers, in my opinion, should give you the option to be able to attach them to a board, in my opinion, like routers, you know, routers and the like. It turns out this was the right prick to take apart once it was slotted together. This was one of those ideas that came to me early AM. I often, I'm often waking up at silly o'clock with no chance of getting back to sleep because I have this an, an idea like this and it just snowballs from there. I'm not sure why I thought turning the blade to face the other way was a good idea. There really wasn't any need. I should have just set the jigsaw further down the plywood and fed the guide jig into the blade normally with the same amount of support as I had doing it this way. Why the jigsaw I hear you ask? It has blades designed to cut metal. It has speed control, which my bandsaw doesn't. And sawing this by hand, I just knew it was going to be slipping all over the place. Also, it's very close to the thickness of the stock I had chosen for the driver part. I'm not going to lie, be no likey working with metal. It's cold looking, it's dirty work, and you've got that metallic taste in your mouth, like rag week. Hey guys, today I want to talk about a very important topic, and that is clenching. <laughs>
off the back this didn't go well you could see my lines of way off the corners which um, caused me lots of problems all the way I was obviously being very absent-minded that day because it's really obvious looking at this footage now to see where I mean there's th at least three signs four signs I screwed this up and it's important to get all your marking out perfectly because you want everything to be centered by the time it comes to finish sculpting this whole piece I chose Ripple Sycamore for this probably not the best choice because it's not that hard but I was thinking of the looks I was hoping the ripple would come through it but at that point in time I didn't consider most part of you're going to see all of this is going to be fucking end grain so you're not going to see the ripple effect I didn't consider it at that time also the fact that it's white and I wanted to make it match my jig my honing guide when it comes to sculpting a shape to a piece of wood before you do anything draw every craft line you can think of even if it gets lost by being sawn out just get every line down you think you will need even the ones you think you won't need because later down the line you won't have any way of drawing any more lines on it because you won't have any 90 degree faces to work from without lines to work from you need to be well versed you need to be a veteran with a very good eye to get things to the finish point and have a perfect result it's pretty difficult even as a veteran but it, you know to try not to carve away your lines just leave them there protect them at all costs Right here you're going to notice something else that went wrong. So that wood caught on something. And what I can see there is a tiny bit of burr on that plate next to the blade. I pushed harder because it's resisting and it shot itself into the blade, which in turn I missed my line. I sawed the slot first it made it this pretty impossible for the hole saw. The hole saw was supposed to get me close to the finished dimensions for the ferrule so it had to be drilled perfectly centered and that just wasn't happening so so I went back and started all over again. Knowing cutting the slot first was a bad idea I thought oh no let's do it again maybe by hand would be better. I tried stepping up drill bits to get me to the same size as the hole saw to hopefully be more accurate. I needed enough meat in the hole saw into the wood to be able to get, be able to take out the drill bit and just use the actual hole saw. That makes sense. Otherwise, it's just going to slip and slide about the actual hole cutter saw part. The reason I used the hole saw was to get rid of a lot of the waste. The other reason was to give me a depth line and hopefully a nice square shoulder, so the ferrule would sit flush. most expensive tape in the world at 12 quid a roll was well, six quid last April it's the be best double sided tape there is though you need very little of it and it holds like to a blanket Before I went any further, I had no idea what step to take next, as I'm not sure how to clamp it after each stage. You know, I could do the round over the top, and I'd only have the shaft to clamp to, but, you know, it was a um, chicken and egg situation, basically. Nothing had come to mind while dro dropping the kids off the pool this morning, so I, I basically cracked on work and getting the driver part sorted and hopes some plan is made in my nugget along the way. 
Cutting this slot took forever, well, with the needle files. I quickly got the arsehole with that and sent in the ball in the china shop and just kind of slightly angled it to hack away the sides a bit faster. I had to shoot this again because the previous version was well out of focus. Making a round by hand, I find it much easier than making a round oval, especially without any craft lines. It's pretty simple and easy to do, albeit my last attempt was shocking. And that's because I wasn't sighting the file from above. You'll see that in a bit, how bad that was. That's the important part, sight the file from above. That will keep file nice and plumb. If you see the sides, either side of your chisel, you know you're not plumb. File to your line, but leave a hair of stock to sand out the line later. Remember, you've got to get rid of those rasp mark file marks, so leave enough to sand out. Once that's looking all nice and plumb, follow round and remove the stock. Now you have a new line to follow. So it's a uh, rinse and repeat, easy. I mean, look at that. That is absolutely the worst I've ever done. Shocking, absolutely f***ing shocking. Really f***ing off. For anyone that doesn't know, when you're cutting metal, you need a much slower speed. I chose aluminium for this for two reasons. The jig is predominantly silver in colour. There's also some brass looking parts, but I've had brass parts in my shop that go a nice funky green or just lose their shininess. Big boy pants on here. I had no idea how this was going to go. This took a bit of fettling. With the driver part, I wanted the female part to contact the wooden shaft. No slop, no wiggle, a nice firm fit. Even though I wanted a brushed aluminium finish, I didn't want a huge, I didn't want huge gouges out of the metal either. So I got as close to my line as possible before fitting the ferrule. The cool thing is here, I have no craft lines to work to, so I'm using the burn marks from the uh, bandsaw, which will give me an indication of how evenly I'm cutting. I'm not going to lie, this took hours, way past a whole afternoon, more than an afternoon. I wish I'd taken more off at the bandsaw stage. Because the more I took off, the more I could see a shape, the more, more I could see the shape that I was after. Honestly, this is much easier to do if you choose a square block to turn into a round. I didn't want a round, so I felt a kind of rectangular round. If you like, in hand, would generate more torque for when I need to crank down on the on the on the jig. Sculpting cabriole leg with crafting lines referencing from a 90 degree phase makes this easier. This is kind of where I picked it all up from, to be honest. Here, I've got really nothing to help me by a touch and eyeballing it. As the fit was so shit, I thought, fuck it. It kind of doesn't matter as the epoxy will fill Mrs. Bucket up. As I said, I, I wanted to brush aluminum ferrule, so I'm not particularly fussed if I get a bit of scratching in it, but I'm doing my best not to put any deep scratches in it. Most of the time I'm just riding the glue until that's gone. When you're getting close, don't send the file backwards and forwards, like a, a ferocious wank. Use vinegar strokes, make one or two strokes at a time, slow the pace down, and then you, when you're close, move to sandpaper 80, 120 and so on. Remember the sandpaper is also cutting stuck away and you need to get the rasp file marks out. So stay well clear of your line with the tools. You're bleeding, man. I ain't got time to bleed. Hold it up to a dark wall and compare the curves too, that also helps. Change it around, pair the sides, eyeball it. I can see a problem there. Conspiracy theorists that might be thinking I did this on a lathe. As you can see, there's no lathe in my shop or anywhere else on the grounds for that matter. You may be one of those peeps that thinks, ah oh man, that'll do, that'll be fine. You probably guessed it, I'm not that fella. I'm a perfectionist, but I think being a perfectionist has really helped me become better at what I do. Because if I felt like that, oh yeah, that'd be fine, that'd do, should be all right. But I'm never gonna get better at what I do because I'm not gonna try harder to get closer to perfection, am I? I hope somehow I can change that in you, but hear me out. I mean, think 
it's a completely different scenario. Have you ever wondered why McDonald's Coca-Cola tastes 1,000 times better than any Coca-Cola anywhere else out of a bottle? Anywhere. It's all the little touches that go on in the background. You can't see that you don't know anything about pre-chilled syrup in a steel container. No other company gets their Coca-Cola delivered in steel containers. The size of the straw gives you maximum satisfaction and flavour. All these things you don't see, but you do know that's the best Coca-Cola. And for me, I feel that's the same with anything you make, purchase from something. I'd say this took about two days to do. It's all hindered, mainly because the files are working end grain. Big difference in speed and cut working end grain compared to long grain. It's very, very slow end grain. What I do rate these files, they're brilliant. I've had them for seven years and used the hell out of them. I could do with some new ones though, because they're a little bit on the blunt side now. is the honing guide for one reason at the same, also at the same time when I chose the ripple sycamore I thought that I was going to have those lovely lines and have a nice texture in it but 70% of that knob is just showing me end grain you can see some of those ripple bits around the shaft just above the masking tape Like I said earlier about mortise chisels, I'll tell you about it in the next video. mushrooms go down a treat with reindeer bits if you can get a reindeer to bits in a cup for you so if you like the cut of my jib please like and subscribe share if you're really feeling kinky and uh, we'll see each other again be lucky